Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and it's a Monday, and it's a Marketing Monday, as you saw, just like that, dun, 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 for event professionals like me. And uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I produced the Minnesota Event Planners Expo in March. Just finished that after the then the corona thing happened, but we've got it scheduled for next March, March 3rd at Earl Brown Heritage Center. So any of you that are event planners and want to come to that, if you're an event professional, caterer, balloon decorator, staging, lighting, all that kind of stuff, come one, come all. So I've got my friend Michael Helmke on. He's uh, the digital concierge, and he's our expert as far as the digital world. And we're going to be talking today about relationships. So one second, I'm going to bring Mike on. So stand by. We'll bring Mike on. There he is. Ooh. <laughs> Ta-da! Just like that. How far art thou, Mike? Michael, doing, doing great, Brad. How are you doing? You, you prefer Michael or Mike? Michael. I'll do it. Too many syllables. That's why I use Brad. Bradley's too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, hey, did you get some rain? I did. I did. Wind? No wind, but there was some nice rain this morning. How about you? All right, well, power went out. I was just making myself really? a cup of coffee right in the middle of it, all of a sudden dark. Wow. Okay. Like that happens kind of fast. And the you wind did. came up. I was working on some stuff. I couldn't sleep. So I woke up early and mm -hmm. I was working on some stuff and the wind started kicking up. And my wife said that uh, she heard some crashing. So I think a tree fell down in the marsh. And, oh my God. But we're alive, which we is okay. alive. Yes. And the internet still works. Yes. So life is good considering the alternative. Yes. So today we're going to talk about relationships, which is an interesting thing because now we're in this Corona deal and it used to be able to go and network and actually meet people face to face. I think the concept of building a relationship online, we're forced into making it effective. And I think a lot of people don't realize that you do have to develop a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like um, the um, like email marketing, you got to be a real good writer. Because on the other side of that email address is a human being. And I think a lot of people forget that. They just kind of throw stuff out. And I want to bring another point up. Sometimes their email, they might say, hey, guys, or hello, everybody. The reality is it's one person your email you're talking with. So you got to really narrow it down to that one individual. And maybe then the relationship would work. What are your thoughts on what I just got done spewing forth? It's all good stuff. It's interesting thinking about the big changes that we've gone through with COVID. And I'm not going to rehash all the medical stuff or the political stuff, but that people are so so people are craving relationships, I think, more than they used to be because for a while we were all stuck at home. And two, back when you could network or get out or go door to door it seemed like there were easier ways of meeting a whole bunch of people and then interacting with them one-on-one. -on -one. And I think you could probably more easily get volume that way. And even if you weren't super effective at it, you'd still find people because you could you could see them, you could poke them, you could shake yeah. their hand and, and make eye contact and go from there. And then when you're faced with you know social media, which frankly, no one is really that good at, it's it's a totally different ball game and it's really disorienting and yet you still have to create a relationship and you still have to be able to say hi i think you're really interesting can we have a conversation and yet it's so noisy on the internet and there's so many people who are jostling for position and sticking their elbows out and tripping each other and saying completely ridiculous and annoying things that it's hard to stand out and not be lumped in with all the, all the annoyances that are out there. It's people would just rather people would just rather watch cat videos by by comparison. <laughs> and and they might be watching cat videos while they're having a conversation with you. Yes. So we should all talk about cats or dogs or windstorms or things like that. You never know. I mean, like. I've had situations where I'm messaging on Facebook, we're in a conversation, and it's a, it's a long, either they're going to prospect me about something or they're actually seriously interested in what we're talking about. Right. And, and then I say, hey, you want to get on the phone? Then they go, oh, do you know, I, I, was, uh, I, I got some things I got to do. I got some meetings. <laughs> 
Right. Or you're in a conversation and then all of a sudden the conversation stops and you wonder what happened? Where'd you go? You type it in there. What happened? Are you still there? Where'd you go? And then all of a sudden, oh, I had to take the dog out. Right. Right. Because people don't think that there's actually a human being on the other side having a conversation. Mm -hmm. they, they just go away and I'll just get to it when I come back. Right. Well, by now my my, my whole thought changed. <laughs> but, well, and, and that's the funny thing about LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn a lot for business, for prospecting, for creating relationships. And one of the things that really struck me about it as a communications platform is how the majority of people on LinkedIn don't check LinkedIn all the time. If you're on Facebook, a lot of people are checking Facebook all the time. They get notifications on their phone. It beeps. Same thing with Instagram, Snapchat, all those. With LinkedIn, a lot of people use LinkedIn once a day or once a week. So when you do conversations on LinkedIn, it's slow. You send a message. Hi, how are you doing? Fine. Next day. And it, it's it's like it's like next day. Send, next day. It's like sending letters over the ocean sometimes. And, and yes. you just have to be, you have to be patient for that. But it's still effective eventually. And it's still all about making a connection and being interesting and, and showing interest in other people and listening. But as a marketer, this is a, a true story. A um, guy that I interviewed and talked about this. Um, he had a book. He wrote this book and then he published it and he's at, on Twitter. And he had a conversation with this person. This person was saying, your book is great. You're, I'm one of your biggest fans. You're my, I, I think you're just wonderful. And this guy went on vacation and thought, you know what? I'm going to unplug from Twitter for a little while. I'm going to go on vacation. So he takes a couple days off. And this other guy's probably saying, hey, where'd you go? The guy comes back and they're talking again. And the biggest fan was now the biggest enemy mm -hmm. because you ignored him. Yes. Now he's angry. Yes. <laughs> so how can you get around, how can you get around something like that? Because that guy did nothing wrong other than not be 24 seven online. Right. Well, the great thing about the internet is there's a lot of ways of doing things and you can have all kinds of direct conversations with people and follow up with them that way, just like you do over the telephone or in person with meetings and so forth. And there's social media where you can put out messages and things, but there's also email. And while you can do all of your communications over email and do one-on-one -on -one communications, where is he going with this? He's going with email newsletters and mailing lists because you can have a really close one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone online. You can also attract an audience of followers to your email newsletter or your email list. And the reasons you might want to do that or the reasons that your, your friend might want to do that is as another way of staying in touch with people. So let's say you send out, let's say you're going to do an email list about digital marketing like I do. Three yeah. times, three times a week. And I was just going to say, you you write very good. I like the way that you. Oh, thank you. And it's, I it's appreciate good. that. So if you're not on his newsletter, you might want to do that. <laughs> yes, digitalconcierge.net. The advantage of an email newsletter is you can write it ahead of time and pre-schedule it. So if I'm going on vacation like that, I would write out a couple weeks worth of entries first and pre-schedule them so that they keep coming out and there's still a way to feel like you're in contact with me, with me because I'm still sharing stories, I'm still asking questions, I'm still giving advice and help. It's a one-way platform, though I'm happy to respond to people who reply to me, but it's it means I'm not going completely dark. My audience still has a way to hear things from me and I still have a way of keeping their interest and keeping them thinking about me, which is one of the really the biggest benefit of any kind of email list is it keeps you from being forgotten and it gradually strengthens the relationship you have with the people who like you, Brad, like what I write and like what I do. So it's, it's a really powerful method of staying in touch with people. 
What about some of the stuff like sometimes corporate firewalls don't let certain things in? Like certain emails or? Yeah, yeah, certain emails. Yeah, well, um, deliverability, as they say in the trade, deliverability of your emails is a tricky thing. And I actually recently switched email providers because I realized some people were inexplicably not getting my emails. And it wasn't because of anything I'm doing, but when you're sending out emails over a third party platform like a MailChimp or a Kartra or an Aweber, you are sending your emails along with a bunch of other people. And you have to hope that they are doing the right thing and no one's complaining. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a complicated thing. So you have to pay attention to error reports from your email provider, how well your emails are getting delivered. It's a complicated thing. It helps to have a friend like me to work with who can help you with, with solving some of those problems. Because um, I like solving those problems, but they aren't very fun. And, so, and there's other platforms that you should probably be on too for some reason if an email didn't get through because because sometimes emails come they, they don't go in, in the spam folder or the trash folder mm -hmm. and sometimes they do which is kind of weird you do yeah, some sometimes they just vanish silently or the person who didn't receive it can't figure out how to find where it vanished too um I actually had a personal problem with, with Google for a while where Google wasn't receiving emails from one of my email addresses. It wasn't a broadcast address, but I was able to reach out to Google uh, email support and they solved the problem. They, they agreed that I wasn't doing anything wrong and they fixed me so that my email started going through again. But there are ways of figuring those things out. Well. On that interesting topic of email like that, if you're sending out emails, how do you know, say you got a thousand people in your list, how do you know that all thousand of those people are getting emails? What if only 500 are getting them? Mm -hmm. What about those other ones? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting thing. So any, any of your email marketing platforms, again, like a MailChimp or an Aweber, they will give you a report called the open report because any email you send out through your marketing system has a little magic tag in it so that when someone opens that email, it notifies that the email was opened. So I you have, can- I have another question on that topic. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm an early riser. Sometimes I get up at like one, two in the morning. Yes. And I send emails to people. And yes. this happens uh, sometimes in via HubSpot. Mm -hmm. And they say that Tammy just opened your email. I send yes. it and all of a sudden she didn't really open it because she's, I don't think she's, Mm -hmm. Okay, right now. Right. How right. does how does it get tagged as open when they didn't really open it? See, that's the funny thing with the open rate. It's an imperfect measure. So some people have an email system that automatically checks their email for security purposes. And in doing that, it may make it seem like the email was really opened. And it can happen immediately. So those are false opens. You can also have cases where for security reasons, someone's email system will be set up to not load any images because it's the image, it's showing the image that lets the third, lets me know that you opened my email. So those folks don't show up as opening the email because they never check on any of the images. So you end up with a situation where you have an open rate, like maybe your emails get open 30% of the time by your audience. Um, that might be right. It's probably right within, you know, 5%, but some people that are opening your, look like they're opening the email who aren't really. And some people are opening the email where you can't tell. And all you can do, and all I can say is you can treat the open rate as a, a, a measure from email to email how many are getting opened. It's not gonna be a perfect measure, mm -hmm. but you can use it over time to see, is it staying consistent? Is it going up? Is it going down? And in any case, you can use it as a measure of how good was your subject line? Because the email subject line is the most of the reason why people will open your emails. You'll have a certain number, uh, go, go ahead. You can kind of just use that as a, 
as a monitor to kind of analytics to see if that's right kind of working that's right and so when i switched email providers recently because i felt that on my previous one i wasn't getting as many opens as i should or some people weren't getting them i think my overall open rate went up by around five or seven percent i'd say it's been enough time now that that i think i think i'm seeing that much improvement just from switching platforms it's interesting when you try and put these new technology communication methods into like real life so mm -hmm. like if you're on the stage and you're talking to 5,000 people in an auditorium, how many of them just aren't listening to you? <laughs> right. They're right. Kind of just like daydreaming. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's kind of the same thing. They're, the open rate isn't what you think it was. You know, I spoke in front of 5,000 people. No, you didn't. You were boring. You talked to about 500 people. Right. And, that's, and you can gauge the auditorium a little bit by the applause and the strength of the applause and whether they get your jokes. And with email, what I do is sometimes, you know, I always ask something of my audience when I email out. Sometimes it's a sales message, but a lot of the time it's a question. And not everyone will answer the questions, but often I will get enough answers that I know, okay, they were awake. And that's a good thing. And then or you can I, respond back with that in your next email and talk about, you know, Tammy had this question and this is right. the Right. There's right. the communication part mm -hmm. and the relationship building. Yes. And that's important too, because you want to let your audience know that you're listening and that you're really there. And it's not just a one way thing. People really do want to get to know you. Um, and if they asked to be on your email list, either because they filled out the sign up form on your website or they just came out and asked you, you really should be writing regularly because there are people in the world who want to hear from you and give that to them. Take advantage of that need, that desire, because you'll you'll get good things from it. And that's the same kind of thing on other social media platforms, Twitter and LinkedIn. Right. Right. And you got to engage because even the algorithms like that kind of thing when you actually start getting something going and the, the ranks get a little higher. Yeah, it's definitely true on social media that the more likes and especially comments you get on practically any platform, the more your posts will be presented to people. So what other uh, relationship building, I guess digital relationship building platforms and th places are there? There's all these little social media platforms. There's those forums and stuff like that where you can get into these conversations. Mm -hmm. I like video like this where you actually can have a conversation and if there's more people in there, you can bring them into the screen and all that kind of stuff. I, I got to figure out how to do that too to bring a little few more. I think you can bring 10 people in here. Mm -hmm. I think you can with StreamYard. Yeah, you can. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. No, that's really powerful. Um, video and podcasts are huge right now and the the great thing about finding people who are making videos regularly and making podcasts regularly especially in interview formats like what you do brad is you need people to talk to all yes. of people need people to talk to so if you want a platform let's say you're a public speaker let's say that's part of your business and you want to try and get speaking gigs at corporate events or things like that Start going on podcasts, start going on, on video interview shows. And again, these people making them, they need warm bodies to talk to. It doesn't mean they'll talk to anyone, but they need people to talk to. And you know, you start, start a conversation with them online, introduce yourself, um, seem like an interesting person, and you'll very likely find it's not hard to get on these shows. Um, yeah, there's a platform I use uh, called Radio Guest List, and they've got mm. all sorts of people that are looking to get on. There's there's others too. I have to seek some more of those out. And uh, it, it's a I really like their platform because it's a free thing to do, and you just put a little uh, sort of a call for for presenters. Mm -hmm. you, you check off these little boxes what industry they're in, if it's religion or if it's marketing or if it's sports or if it's lifestyle or whatever and then you just make a call these are the people i want to talk to i want to talk to real estate agents and then they start coming they they they, they respond it's pretty yeah that's pretty cool. cool that's, that's how cool. If you go on my youtube channel that's you'll see a lot of those 
of people okay. I just interview. Sometimes I'm talking to like, I'll, I'll do five interviews a day, which is kind of a lot, but I enjoy it. It's <laughs> kind of fun, you know? Mm -hmm. It's one hand washing the other. It's relationship building. I've gotten some right. clients out of it where we're talking and things, and then all of a sudden they say, hey, I want to do this. And it accelerates it, in my opinion. I think the uh, I think video accelerates that mm -hmm. no like, and trust factor. In fact, mm -hmm. um, with the, within the event industry, a lot of this stuff is going the whole live streaming kind of thing. And uh, there's a platform, I can't remember the name of it right now, but I just had a conversation with this morning. They are, they, they sort of have a mixture of, it's kind of like Eventbrite that we used for this. So they've got the uh, payment processing for people that are going to buy tickets to the whatever this event be is, whether it's right. a, a virtual concert or a trade show or a seminar or whatever. They also, within their thing, they do PayPal advertising. And oh, the weird nice. part is they pay for it. Now, why do they pay for it? Because the more people that come to the webinar, the more they make because they get a percentage of the ticket sales. Oh, very nice. You pay for the advertising. So it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. And they've got an affiliate program. So I'm going to get <laughs> a hold of that. You know, me and Excellent. affiliate. So, yeah, the whole world is uh, flip flopped. I mean, this uh, a lot of people don't know what to do in mm -hmm. this this COVID situation. But mm -hmm. the reality is, is you got to know that there's someone on the other side. Like when you write your emails, it seems like you're actually talking to me as opposed yes. to spewing stuff out you're actually asking questions and making suggestions and things i think that's really important that a person it is communicate well, and i want to go back to something else you said in passing about the you know it's a it's a it's a common saying one hand washes the other but in forming in trying to create relationships with people whether it's event planning or any kind of business if you need someone with someone something from someone Think about what you can do for them first. Can you introduce them to someone? Do you have some resource that they need? It, it really has to be a two-way street and it works so much better when people think about it that way rather than just saying, hey, I have this really cool thing that you need. Could you buy it right now? Which doesn't really <laughs> excite people very much, no matter how cool the car is that you're standing in front of. Yeah, and a lot of people, it's, it's, it's interesting how they don't understand that. They sort of think that Everybody needs my thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but you're, whatever it is you're selling, there's another one somewhere else. I don't necessarily need it. It's the relationship <laughs> right. buy it from you because I like you, not because you have it because someone else has got it. No, and that's fundamentally why people buy things. It's not because of the thing itself. It's very rarely for the thing itself. It's, it's because they want a relationship. It's because of the story behind it. It's, it's all, it's all personal connections or the story of them telling themselves or something. It's really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. It huh. is. Relationships. So Relationships. I say that sometimes because when I, when I summarize what business is all about, it's about generating leads. So I say plant the seed. That's mm -hmm. how you get the lead. And then it's the relationship. And then closing the sale, that the fruit will fi fall off the vine if it's ripe enough. Mm -hmm. So it's the relationship that takes all the time. Yes. And once you bond that relationship, that then that relationship will also refer you out to other people. So it's very powerful when you got a human that's being your ambassador going out and saying, you got to talk to this Michael Helm Helmke guy. He's uh, He knows all about this digital thing mm -hmm. because they read your emails and you created a relationship. Mm -hmm. I like your... Uh, I'll put it back up there again, the digital concierge. I like that. Yeah, thank you. That kind it's of all, it, it. Yeah, it, it's it's all about doing, it's like the concierge in the five-star hotel. You have something that you need. You don't necessarily know how to get it. It seems impossible, like those show tickets or that reservation at that hot restaurant, back if you remember when there were restaurants mm -hmm. um, that you could go to. Um, and the concierge just takes care of all the details somehow. I mean, sometimes you know how, but sometimes it's just kind of magical. And that's that's what I see myself doing for people. I will sit down and listen to what your needs are and ask a bunch of questions. And we'll kind of 
look at what your business picture is right now and what's worked and what hasn't. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, something will just kind of be there in plain sight where it's like there, that's, that's the thing you need to work on next. That's the easiest next step in your plan that will bear fruit yeah. and give results. And that's because you work with a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. So somebody has got this probably basically the same problem. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a concierge at a hotel, like you'd mentioned, you know, the, what happens, there was a, a friend of mine, John Henderson, he had Henderson limousine, Henderson transportation. Mm -hmm. and he used to do a, a party every year and he'd invite all the concierge from all the hotels. Right. Why did he do that? Because they're the ones that say, I need a limousine. Mm -hmm. Dr. John Henderson. So it's relationship mm -hmm. building again. Right. And that right. concierge kind of, th there's an organization here in Minnesota called the Minnesota Concierge Association. Mm. So it's all those people that are, that's their thing. They, they just know all these things. They know where, where the, the best restaurants are, where the right. seafood restaurants are, where the music is, where the theater is. And they, they just know all that stuff. They, they don't have a brochure rack. It's all right here. <laughs> right. Right. It's all due to relationships. So anybody that's a supplier in the event industry, you should get tied in with that concierge and all the hospitality crew because they're the ones that get asked these questions. Right. Find that right. stuff. Just like the digital concierge. If you're exactly. wondering, you got a question about why doesn't my email go through or what's a server? Yeah, we could talk about that too. I thought that was in the restaurant business. Now you're telling me it's in the <laughs> digital world, the server. Well, that's a whole nother topic. And we've gone for 26 minutes and 54 seconds. So I don't want to bore anybody. It looks like we've got some people on my little, my little meter up there. It shows some people. Oh, good. So is there anything else you want to share with us before we sign off? Just let everybody know that we've got another one of these next Monday. It's about closing that sale, setting that hook, reeling them people in. No, Making the money. You don't have to drag them in. Right. Happy to pay you for your product or service. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's going to be a fun conversation. No, so I there, think we there are some wisdom that you have about relationships in this digital world. A little bit more. Oh well. Um, the the so the number one mistake I see when I come when someone comes to me and they show me their messaging and what they've written and what they're trying to sell the number one mistake, the easiest thing to fix is take the word I and substitute it for you and make all the grammar work. Because it's really easy to talk about yourself and what you do and how you solve a problem for someone. And to the rest of the world, they will be attracted by you talking about their problem. What's hard for your customer? And, in, and, and write it in from their perspective, as if you're talking directly to them. If you make that one no, change. That if, isn't just email, that's applicable to doing video like this. Video, exactly. websites, email, even print, stuff like yeah, that. Everything, mm -hmm. everything, everything, everything. People want you to be talking, talking to them. Seek so. to understand, then be understood. Right, right. Wonderful. Well, Michael, I appreciate you taking the time. This is a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff because it, it makes my brain think. and. When you sit at home all by yourself, typing on a computer, <laughs> your, your brain gets kind of stale. Yes, it does. Yeah. So I'm going to sign fun. this off. Michael, appreciate you taking the time. If you want to stay yep. in the green room for a little while, we'll have a conversation after and explore what we're going to be dealing with next week. We'll Thanks, do. Michael. Thank you, Brad. Well, that was it. That was Michael, the digital concierge, digitalconcierge.net. And if you want to know more about me, you can go to magicbrad.com. That's where I am. And let me throw this up here, too. This is what we're doing. It's Marketing Monday. i got to take that magicbrad.com thing off there. There we go. Marketing Monday, we're doing a three-part series. Next Monday is going to be the uh, final one. And we're going to be talking about closing of the sale. So peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Brad signing off with the Magic Brad Show. If you want to know more about this, I've got these listed on magicbread.com, or you can search on Eventbrite. You'll probably find it there, and I'll have them up on good old Facebook, too. And then I'll be beaming this up to YouTube, and if you join my YouTube channel and uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel, that would be appreciated. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Someday that'll happen. So peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Bread signing off. 
Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well.